Speaker, taking note that under the provisions of Standing Order Number 72, I, Paul Gordon Ongu, a new elected member of the County Assembly of CI, representing this assembly work, propose to move a motion for the impeachment of William Ongu, the Deputy Governor of CI, for one gross violation of the Constitution of Kenya 2010 under the laws, and two abuse of office and the gross misconduct. The specific grounds for the motions are outlined in the motion. I would have wished to refer that to tomorrow, but now that we're on recess, let me be guided by the standing orders. Standing order number 71 talks on procedure for removal of uh, the governor by impeachment. And it says, before giving notice of motion under section 33 of the County Government Act 2012, the member shall deliver to the clerk copy of the proposed motion in writing, stating the grounds and particulars upon which the proposal is made for the impeachment of the governor, or the grounds for gross violation of the power provision of the Constitution or any other law, where there are serious reasons for believing that the governor has committed crime under the national or international law, or the gross misconduct of his office. The notice of motion shall be signed by the member who affirms that the particulars of the allegations contained in the motion are true to his or her knowledge. And uh, it goes further to say that a member must have obtained approval from the uh, clerk. So may I establish whether you got approval from the clerk? Yes. And it goes further to say that the motion should have been signed by at least a third of the membership. Honourable members, I confirm that the motion, <coughs> the notice of the said motion has met the threshold, it has been received by the clerk, signed by over 26 members of the assembly, and therefore I will guide as follows. That uh, pursuant to standing order number 71, uh, four and five, upon expiry of the seven days after notice given, the motion shall be placed on the order paper and shall be disposed of within three days, provided that if the House is not then sitting, the Speaker shall summon the County Assembly to meet on a course and cause the motion to be considered at the meeting after notice has been <coughs> given. I therefore direct that uh, the motion having been admitted and having met the threshold, that the speaker shall appoint a date upon which the motion shall be placed in our order paper and considered disposed of with uh, as soon as possible. And that date shall not be earlier than 29, because the standing orders direct that not uh, that after the expiry of seven days. In essence, it means that uh, your motion has met the threshold and it has been notice has been given, but it will be tabled for consideration. The motion will be placed on the order paper and you will discuss on merit. I now move the motion that this house that this house adopts the report of the Committee of General Oversight on the allegations raised by the Deputy Governor of the Committee of the on corruption and mismanagement in the current executive of CI. The speaker said, the Committee on General Oversight is a committee that is established password to the standing orders of this House and specifically standing order number 162A of the CIA County Assembly Standing Orders. Mr. Speaker, this it is a committee that boasts the uniqueness 
of being manned by all the members of the county assembly. <coughs> and the speaker, in its mandate, the community is allowed to invite its meetings, members of the community to address matters that relate to more than one county department, to address questions that are needed to be addressed by uh, the community, and deal with matters which, in the opinion of the speaker, can be better handled outside the other house committees. Mr. Speaker, the Committee on General Oversight is a culmination of investigations undertaken by the committee, that is the report of this committee, on the allegations of corruption and mismanagement in the county executive, allegations that are uh, and proven by his honor, uh, say so, by the deputy government. Mr. Speaker, these investigations were launched or commenced or put on initiation by the Honorable Francis Otiato, who invited the deputy governor to appear before the Committee of General Oversight and provide media platforms, I mean, and provide evidence in the allegations that he made on various social events and on social media platforms, the fact that there was corruption and mismanagement at the county executive. And so, Mr. Speaker, this is the recommendation of the House. That, uh, one, having determined that all the allegations as presented to the House in writing by the Deputy Governor stand and substantiated, have not been satisfactorily substantiated. And having therefore looked at this as perhaps uh, mere conjecture without proof, without substance. And the speaker which is not substantiated, in other words, has no substance. And the speaker, this house direct that in the future all state officers within uh, this government, and that includes ourselves, Mr. Speaker, and public officers, must desist from making allegations, public or private, official or unofficial, formal or non-formal, that when called upon seriously to engage and substantiate, they cannot substantiate. Mr. Speaker, that in the future, any state officer, and I add again, executive or assembly, or public officer, in these two arms of government, <coughs> that wants to make public complaints. Or even private, on the management of the county government affairs, must process, must process the issues and proceed through the duly established institutions and agencies, <coughs> so that you speak as an officer to what you can be held to account for and to which you can account satisfactorily, and to which you can, sub can provide substance satisfactorily, and which you can substantiate before man and before God. Mr. Speaker, it was really very hard time for us to come to this conclusion. And again, when we started this journey to try to understand where there can be problem within our executive, and I said it here, 
in moving with the uh, motion that possibly uh, there is just a misunderstanding uh, at our executive or broken channels of communication. And this has given a lot of room for rumors and uh, a lot of name calls. Mr. Speaker, allow me to say that uh, going, uh, going by the allegations uh, that were put forth, it is good for the people of CIA to know the actual truth. Mr. Speaker, having gone through the documents, because I asked for these documents from Deputy Governor and it was presented. So far, I would say and support uh, the finding of the general house that on issues like, say, the first issue on Basides, related to corruption, all the three angles of this issue, Basari, is a speaker, there is no specific reference. Like, if you suggest, is making a policy suggestion that the uh, principals or the head teachers of the benefiting institutions need to be incorporated. I think when we were passing uh, or doing amendment of uh, our Basari uh, Act, I do recall very well that some of these were part of the uh, considerations and that the application forms were being used and had to be signed by the head institutions. Mr. Speaker, in, uh, in his own right, the Deputy Governor has suggested that we need to get uh, these people involved. The failure to reach them, it is riddled with corruption. I'm just wondering, in Ipo East, we do 300, uh, about 300 to 400 students every financial year benefit, and from different institutions. Some come to, from Mabel Capello, some come from Mabel Mombasa. Our students are there. Will you tell me that it will be tenable for us here in CIA to invite head teachers for all the 300 schools? Mr. Speaker, I rise to support this is the report as, uh, as read by the chair. So, Speaker, we have had a series of months where Sierra County is in news for all the bad reasons. And sometimes uh, news, whether good or bad, is still news. But when the source of news is somebody as senior as the second in chain, then that is a matter that uh, needs to be looked at. Very, very keen. So, Speaker, I will address myself to page 20 of the report where the former DG, or sorry, the DG <laughs> is alluding to the fact that uh, certain allocations were removed from a Lego and uh, Sent to some other places. This is because there is a reason why we do supplementary budgets. And this is not the first time, neither we did it with the last time. We do it when new funds have come into the place that were not yet factored in as at the time that we were making the original budgets. We do supplementary when needed as a reason that was not factored when when the very first one was being done. The budget that we are uh, implementing now, all of us are aware that was done in the last regime, Mr. Speaker, sir. After campaigns, it's natural that we campaign based on a manifesto and, uh, and, and, and some agenda that we want to write and achieve as leaders. The purpose for supplementary one there that was discussed and adopted by this house, Mr. Speaker, was to address the emerging issues. What, are, what were some of these emerging issues? The emerging issues that we had to address are things that rose from the pledges that we made. And the former D, the DG, sorry, was at the heart 
of the campaigns when we were telling our people that upon assumption of office, Mr. Speaker, then they, they will not need to suffer thinking about seats. And, at the like <laughs> In this one, we want the deputy governor also to tell the great people of CI that who gave him this mandate? Or is he trying to show us that he's sabotaging his boss? This one I house.